and welcome to Diecast Restos. It's Jason here with the 11B petrol tanker. This model was in the range from 1958 until 1964. It is identical to its prior model, the 11A petrol tanker. The only real difference being that it was increased from 52mm to 63mm. So here you can see the model I've picked up. It's a red SO liveried petrol tanker, an ERF. Uh, it's missing the rear tank door there as you can see. There is a brace in between the cab and the tanker which is quite useful considering I've got another model of the same variety missing that and it makes a huge difference as the cab has been pushed back onto the tank. The other difference between the 11A and the 11B is that the casting is not completely hollow but it is all one part. So all I need to do with this model is to remove the axles and then I can begin the repainting process. I'll also just need to push out the front end a little, it looks like it's been pushed in slightly. So first up I use my rotary tool to remove the axles. Just a little on the casting, it's likely that it's based on an ERF model called the Streamliner which was made between 1938 and 1948. ERF as a company was set up in 1933 by Edwin Richard Foden. And there's a bit more of the family history and the business history coming up in a little bit. So here I've got a replacement water slide transfer for the rear door and the rear door itself. Both of these came from model-supplies.co.uk. The size of the transfer for both the 11A and the 11B was the same at 22mm. Uh, here's an image of all of the individual parts that I'll be restoring. Next I'll move on to paint stripping using my horrible brown stew. So a little on the history of ERF, as I said they were set up in 1933 in Sandbach. Uh, which was the same town that the Foden company had set up previously. Um, the main difference was Foden were involved in commercial steam vehicles, whereas Edwin had had a falling out with the Foden board after insisting that the future of truck building laid in diesel engines rather than steam powered vehicles. And here you can see I'm just finishing off polishing up one of the axles. And then I move on to cleaning up those wheels. Just a bit of dirt and grime that's built up in these, so I'll give them a scrub with a toothbrush and some warm water. There are several differences between the variations on the 11B. They started without that brace between the front cab and the tank. They also had different paint trim, so the early models were hand painted in, in silver and gold. And then later the little fuel tanks on the side eventually just became the same body colour. So here you can see I've removed the vast majority of the paint. There's a little more to come off so I'll use some dental tools to pick away at that. Uh, it's still filling in that front grille but you can see some of the nice details on the model. It's quite a nice casting. I like the curve of the wheel arches and I like the prominence of the front grille. And it is quite a simple design overall but sometimes simplicity breeds the best results. Here I'm scraping off the remainder of the paint using a hand wire brush, just loosening it up a little bit. And then I use my wire brush in my rotary tool to polish up the tank. And here I'll show you a little before and after if I do this front half of the tank. Just with a couple of sweeps over the top, you can already start to see there's quite a difference that it makes. Before I get it all prepped for priming, I use my hammer and a file to tap out the pillars on the front cab. It's just been pushed in ever so slightly on the corner. I used the file mainly because I couldn't find anything else small enough to fit in the gap. Here I'm just fitting in the tank end. And I can fit that in using a hammer just to tap it into place, ensure it's nice and secure. 
when these spare parts are delivered they're not always the best finish on them so I give this a good polishing and it comes out really nice and shiny. This is definitely one of the more satisfying parts of the restoration. So here's the model with the majority of the paint removed, a couple of small flecks left. But it's nice and polished, nice and shiny, ready for this priming. I use the usual Tamiya Fine Surface Primer, covering all areas as per usual and having to ensure I get the base and the interior as well because of it being the complete model. And there we have it, that is the model primed, ready for a coat of paint. So I apply the red paint, this is the Tamiya TS8 Italian Red. It's the same as I'd use for my custom Ferrari Berlinetta in a previous episode. It's quite a good match to the original paint scheme. Again, there's a lot of variation with these particular models, given the age of them. And here you can see the first coat of paint. The tank it really has a lovely shine to it. And the tank end, you can see how well polished it is. I know it's wet paint, but it just looks fantastic. Next, I'll just trim down the transfer, pop it in some water, and I'll just apply a little bit of water to the tank end so I can move around the transfer if I need to, which I ev evidently do. I move it into position, then roll over it with a cotton bud, ensuring I get all of the excess air and water out from underneath. Now I move on to filling in the grill details using a silver paint pen. I just pour the paint pen out onto the top of a little shot glass and apply from there using a fine paintbrush. Some intricate detail on here, but it's a large surface area to cover on that grill. I'm just making sure I get the underside as well. Then I can fill in the light bulbs and then I'll fill in the smaller fuel tanks on the side. Prior to tapping on the wheels I gave the model a coat of Tamiya Clear TS13. This will just give a nice shiny finish and add an extra layer of protection to that transfer on the back. And then using the same silver paint pen, I can apply the finishing details on the ends of the axles. So here's what we started with, a slightly damaged model missing some significant parts. Unfortunately, I'm missing my turntable footage today. I was a little too excitable in getting this model started. And this is what we finished up with, a nice shiny new looking model, some minor fixes to the front cab, a new layer and coat of paint, the new tank end with the new transfer. Oh, it looks like I've made a bit of an overpaint spillage on the, uh, on the small tank on the side there. I'll have to go back and fix that up. I was very keen to get this one done. But I'm quite pleased with the general outcome of this model. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video today. Thank you very much for watching once again. And I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.